Good morning. There we are. Metalheads here now. Welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And now we are going to take a look at all the albums we missed in the month of March 2019. March has been a crazy month for new releases. We've seen some album of the year contenders from Venom Prison and Whitechapel, as well as some incredibly ambitious and interesting records from Devil Master and Devin Townsend. Lots of high-profile releases from artists like Queensryche, In Flames, fucking Motley Crue for God's sakes, as well as some uh, highly talked about underground albums from bands like Pissgrave. It's been a hell of a month, and obviously there's a lot of stuff that I managed to miss along the way. A couple big ones, actually, that I really wanted to talk about, but we just didn't get the time. But thankfully, here we are now, so why don't you crack open a beer, join me, and let's go over all the albums that I missed or I feel that I missed, in March 2019. First off, Warheads on Foreheads, a massive compilation from Megadeth, released March 22nd. Not gonna lie, I got confused when this was first announced. I thought it was actually their new album, the one that they're apparently working on, the follow-up to Dystopia. That's not the case. Although it is just as big, it is a massive, and I do mean massive, four-disc greatest hits record featuring songs from across the band's 35-year career to commemorate their 35-year career. All the songs have been remastered and reworked, and it all sounds really great, and every era of Megadeth is represented here. Definitely more stuff from the big records, you know, like Rust in Peace and Symphonies of Sickness, but if, some, if by some wild chance you do enjoy the late 90s stuff and early 2000s stuff, there's some songs there. You got a track from uh, Endgame, you even got one of the tracks from 13 and Super Collider, they're not that bad, honestly. I mean, it's it's not great, but it's better than listening to either of those full albums in whole again. It's a great way to have a lot of these full songs without having the full albums. Uh, I do wish that there was more represented from Endgame, personally. I think that's one a really underrated album from them. But as far as greatest hits albums go, it is a really good collection. It's a really big collection. If you're a Megadeth diehard fan and just haven't gotten around to getting some vinyl, this is definitely something to check out. And more importantly, it'll help bide the time until the next album comes out, so, you know, can't argue with that. Next up, the Backstage to Heaven EP from Doro, released March 8th via Nuclear Blast Records. Two new songs on this EP, both pretty standard fare, if you know Doro. Two live tracks as well, one featuring uh, Johan Hegg from Unamarf. There's some good energy on all these songs, some good ideas, some good collaborations. Johan Hegg is obviously an amazing fucking vocalist, obviously so is Doro as well. I do still personally think her voice is starting to wane a little bit. It's something I noticed uh, on her previous record as well. But, I don't know, there's enough energy and interesting things going on here to recommend this to a diehard Doro fan. I don't imagine you being in need of a dose of Doro, mind you, considering that her last album was fucking gigantic. Way too long, in my opinion. But, nonetheless, it's out, so if you want it, go get it, I guess. I don't really have much else to say on that end. Next up, So What by While She Sleeps, released March 1st via Sleeps Brothers and Spine Farm Records. Man, I really used to like these guys. They were just this really fiery, vicious, metallic UK metalcore band, and they had such a youthful flame to them, and God, I dug the crap out of them on their first album. And as the years have gone by, I've enjoyed them less and less, and at first it was I thought it was because they, I was maybe just getting old, you know, I'm growing out of that style. But then I went back and re-listened to their debut album, and it's still fucking great. So now I just chalk it down to them becoming more and more generic, more and more uncreative, more and more like your typical American metalcore band. It's by no means incompetent, it's just not particularly noteworthy, and that's pretty much why I didn't review it, despite me claiming on Metal Meltdown in the past that I'm actually a big fan of this band. Well, maybe not anymore, but you get the idea. Next up, Trauma from Lifelines, released March 22nd via Fearless Records. Yeah, pretty much everything I said about While She Sleeps, just, just copy and paste it here, I guess. I think they have a bit of an edge because they're a younger band, they're definitely a little bit heavier, but it's just another kind of boring American metalcore band. I, I really don't have much to say. A lot of people seem to like it. Metal Sucks was pretty positive towards one of the debut singles that came out. So maybe I'm just a, maybe in this case I am just a salty old fuck. If that's the case, so be it. But it didn't do anything for me personally. Next up, the albums War and Peace from Demon Hunter, both released March 1st via Solid State Records. I'm not really familiar with Demon Hunter's material. I know they're like a alternative metal kind of Christian band or something like that. I don't know, that's just what I've been told. Don't, don't, don't fucking quote me on nothing. 
Ultimately, this album just suffers from the same problems that most double albums suffer from. The fact that it simply didn't need to be a double album. There's, there's really no need whatsoever. And it doesn't help either that War is objectively the better part of this record. It's heavier, there's more variety, it's more interesting, it's more engaging, it has more of what we expect from any kind of metal band. On the bright side, at least the two diffs are different and they show different sides of Demon Hunter. That is definitely not a bad thing. But all in all, this thing would probably work better if you just cut Peace in half, cut War in half, and then found some kind of middle ground between the two instead of doing a double album. Next up, Vintage, an EP from Witherfall, released March 22nd via Century Media Records. I really enjoyed the two records that Witherfall has done so far, but specifically recently I've really dug back into them, and now they're slowly becoming one of my favorite modern metal bands, if we're being honest. Even if just for Joseph Michael, who I still stand by as saying, this guy is one of the best fucking metal vocalists out there. He is just goddamn fucking insane. Which immediately is kind of why I like Vintage, if we're being honest. It, it strips the sound of Witherfall down to the bare minimum with this really soft, earthy acoustic sound, and it really highlights just how amazing of, a, of an all-around singer Joseph is, particularly on an oddly soulful and unexpected cover of I Won't Back Down. It's actually extremely well done, and it shows Joseph in some extremely tender moments. It's so good that I kind of want to see Witherfall do more acoustic-based music in the future. I'm, I'm being fully serious here. A short but sweet and very engaging EP. Definitely check this out if you're looking for something a little different. Next up, Crux, or maybe Crux? I don't fucking know. The sophomore album from Moontooth. Released March 29th, I'm assuming independently, because I can't find much info on a record label. I actually wanted to do a review of this album, but there's just no time. There's so many new releases coming out the first week of April, and I wanted to move on to those. Uh, but I will talk about it here, because I, I think people need to be keeping an eye on this album and this band. It feels like a more progressive take on the super catchy songwriting style of a band like Mutoid Man. It's got great melodies, it's over the top, it digs right in your ears, but it's also really smart. It's got great musicianship, it's got a lot of weird twists and turns that keep you on the edge of your seat. Maybe it lacks the flair and finesse of what we expect from bigger prog metal bands, but this is a thousand times more entertaining than I think some of those bands. Cough, cough, dream theater. Toilet the Hell gave this a 5 out of 5. Um, currently, based on how I feel about the record now, I would probably give it a 4. Probably. It's just such a nice change of pace from what we normally expect in the world of progressive metal, and I, I highly recommend it. Next up, Howdly Toodly, the sophomore album from Oakley Doakley. I remember these guys, the Ned Flanders fiend metalcore band. Oh my fucking... Oh, I'm so happy right now. The band is kind of one note, if we're being fully honest. I mean, the, the jokes are pretty obvious. It's Simpsons one-liners and shit about Ned Flanders translated into hardcore and metalcore music. At this point, we've all seen the videos. It, it was a viral hit. It was a bit of a meme. We all know what's going on. We all know the drill. It ain't a shocker at this point. But it is still kind of fun, you know? It, it It is still entertaining. Maybe at this point for all the wrong reasons, but but nonetheless. The band create legitimately heavy and entertaining music, and the jokes, while not all that creative, are certainly still enjoyable. I mean, Simpsons memes are honestly some of the funniest ones out there. I mean, I, I, I still laugh at steamed ham jokes, and let's be honest, all of you do too. So while this may not be the most original thing in the world, it certainly is funny and simple and dumb in all the right ways. Maybe you have got a friend who really loves The Simpsons and you're looking for a weird way to introduce them to like metal and hardcore music. I don't know, here's a good band to show them. Just throwing that out there. Next up, Demiurgis, the debut album from Tech Def Super Crew, uh, e Equipoisi? Equipos, if I'm pronouncing that correctly? The E Band, for simplicity's sake? I don't fucking know. This album came out March 8th via the Artisan Era, and it has been creating quite a storm. I've received several requests to review it. Um, anyone who's anyone has been talking about it, or at the very least has been made aware of it. You've got members of The Faceless, Hate Eternal, Beyond Creation, In Fury, so many more uniting on this absolutely massive, over-the-top tech def record. And the musicianship that we see on here, if we're being honest, is absolutely out of this world. It's it's spellbinding. It's, it's incredible. There's no denying that whatsoever. Like, I really can't picture anyone saying that this is, like, incompetently performed or written. Quite the opposite. There's a lot of time and attention that's obviously been put into the performances and arrangement. My problem is, is that 
despite that, I just don't care. And it's not really anyone's fault. I've made it very clear in the past that I kind of have a bias towards a lot of technical death metal. I do feel like the genre is typically speaking style over substance. It's a lot of spectacle and not much else. And it's the same here, man. I mean, these guys are trying their fucking damnedest. And for the record, I, I, I've been able to turn off my brain and just enjoy it for what it is. But then when the album's done and I gotta turn my brain back on, I forget that this album exists. It's like a, a it's like a roller coaster in that sense. Like, no one talks about fucking Space Mountain at Disney World. They talk about going to see Mickey Mouse and going to see the fucking Beauty and the Beast play and that shit. That, that's this album. This album is Space Mountain, and I'd rather spend the rest of my time in Disney World, if that makes sense. But hey, man, if you love Tech Def, more power to you, because this has literally everything you're looking for it's got guitar pyrotechnics and crazy bass playing and crazy piano playing and just generally crazy wild technical music all around and if you're just looking for a spectacle if you love space mountain i couldn't recommend this higher for being honest i'm just gonna chalk it up to it simply isn't for me and we're gonna leave it at that next up into the vortex of obscurity by Obscure Infinity, released March 22nd via FDA Records. Heard a lot of talk about this record as well. If I'm not mistaken, Blaine from uh, Banger Films said this was a must-have death metal album for 2019. Don't know if I fully agree with that. That might be a bit of a stretch, but there's definitely a lot to enjoy here. The drums are unrelenting. The guitars are fast and wild and frantic. Vocals are dominating. The general aura and atmosphere of this record is punishing and evil gruesome all the things we really expect from a great death metal record but the aesthetic of this is a lot more modern it doesn't have the the rough patches that we've heard from other great modern death metal albums like Tomb mold or outer heaven which isn't the shit on those bands it's just that this is decidedly more modern in every way it definitely fits in just enough with those types of bands it's definitely one of the more un interesting underground death metal records that has been sent my way so far this year and while i don't agree i can see why people are going nuts over this album it is just a really solid really clean cut death metal album next up departed souls from magic circle released march 29th via 20 buck spin i almost reviewed this one as well but I opted out because earlier in the month I reviewed a record from a band called Green Lung. And Green Lung and Magic Circle stylistically share enough in common that frankly I kind of realized that I just wasn't going to have much to say about Magic Circle that I didn't say about Green Lung. Which, good news, if you love Green Lung and you're fine with just Black Sabbath worship and 70s occult rock and doom metal, You'll enjoy this record. It is is it captures that sound really well. The vocals are really good. The songwriting could be a little bit more creative. It could maybe have a little bit more fire behind it, but you know, it accomplishes everything that I think it sets out to do. Again, it's just so similar to what we expect from this genre and again, so similar to an album I just reviewed that I struggled to come up with a lot that I felt I could add to the conversation. Even now I'm struggling to think of things that I, I can really say to, to really, you know, again, further the conversation. It's a good, strong doom metal album. It sounds pretty much like every other good, strong doom metal album, but people don't really seem to mind that. A lot of people seem to love this album, so more power to you. If you liked Green Lung, if you love doom metal in general, definitely check this out. Next up, High Anxiety from Oozing Wound, released March 15th via Thrill Jockey Records. Oozing Wound is a weird band, man. They they combine so many different elements and so many different sounds into a weird kind of hardcore thrash aesthetic, and they just kick ass, and they, they, they kick ass. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. I think this album in many ways shows the band at their most experimental, as well as um, musically at the most bleak and miserable. This album sounds a lot more dreaded than previous records. It definitely still has enthusiasm and energy, but it also has a lot of spite. It has a lot more anger and, and uh, resentment, I would say. If you're a fan of a lot of experimental and noise rock, as, as well as more experimental thrash metal bands like Voivod, for instance, definitely check this out. There's a lot of cool stuff to dig your teeth into here. And speaking of weird experimental music, how about we close this off? with an album from a band called Sacred Monster entitled Worship the Weird. This was released independently on March 1st. Uh, it was sent to me by a couple of people, and I can definitely see why. It is a very weird album. In fact, the title Worship the Weird is insanely appropriate. The lyrics are all over the place, the guitars are all over the place, the music across the board is all over the place, the vocals range from being incredibly wild and crazy to just being 
inconsistent and maybe even a little bit amateur. There's a lot of different styles, a lot of different ideas, often clashing at once, and the album, frankly, doesn't have a particularly good flow. There are definitely things to enjoy on this album, but I think it just suffers from being too weird for its own good. And unlike something like the recently released Empath from Devin Townsend, it clearly doesn't have the manpower to bring it all together. I do admire the freedom and, for lack of a better word, the balls of this album. I just think it could be better produced and better arranged. I will be keeping an eye on this band nonetheless, though, because clearly they've got a lot of weird ideas that I, I really hope that they expand on in the future. And that, I think, is officially it. I'm sure there's plenty of other albums that I've missed in the month of March. Uh, a particular gentleman by the name of Socket Sodomizer was shall we say, enthusiastic about a certain Brutal Death Metal album that I missed in March. And I don't care, because it's my channel. But nonetheless, perhaps you would like to share that enthusiasm and tell me what you feel I missed in the month of March, what I should catch up on. Unless your name is Socket Sodomizer, you sir can kindly go fuck off. So with that in mind, thank you for watching The Metal Meltdown. Make sure you press this button, subscribe, so you get updates on The Metal Meltdown immediately. Follow me on Facebook as well. And you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.